Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have a series first, as we delve into two Devil Fruits at the same time, with the Hebi Hebi no Mi model Anaconda, and the Hebi Hebi no Mi model King Cobra. The Hebi Hebi no Mi models Anaconda and King Cobra are both zoan-type fruits that allow their users to transform into their respective snakes, as well as a human-snake hybrid. They were consumed in the series by the two Gorgon sisters who are not Boa Hancock, being Boa Sandersonia and Boa Marigold, and were introduced into the series at the exact same time during the Amazon Lily arc. And before we go too much further, that's why we're covering both at once. Despite the clear differences between Anacondas and King Cobras, I just cannot bring myself to divide these into two separate videos because they do both cover a lot of the same ground. Etymology this time is easy as mate, with Hebi being the Japanese word for snake, and both Anaconda and King Cobra being foreign words adopted into Japanese and used for the purpose of the models. As such, the English translation is almost as simple. I say almost due to the minor differences in Zoan fruit translations between Viz and Funimation, with Viz electing to call their fruits the snake snake fruit, King Cobra, and Anaconda model, whilst Funimation stays closer to the literal Japanese with the Snake Snake Fruit, Model King Cobra, and Model Anaconda. All right, let's talk snakes. And first up, it should be stated that we are jumping right to the top of the snake chain here with both the Anaconda and the King Cobra. Both of them are well renowned for being some of the world's longest snakes. And in fact, the King Cobra does hold the title for the world's longest venomous snake. And both will commonly reach lengths of over five meters, which is roughly 17 feet. And if you're thinking <laughs> five meters, what a laughably low number, then I challenge you to measure out five meters and then picture that distance as a snake and then proceed to attempt not to shit yourself. And with this, we're just talking regular Anaconda and King Cobras rather than what the user becomes when consuming these fruits, which is significantly bigger. Now it should be noted that both Marigold and Sandersonia are naturally massive humans and their snake forms reflect that. However, even with that scale in mind, the average human would still result in an incredibly terrifying snake giant upon consumption of either fruit. But as for which one you'd want to consume, well, let's get into some of the differences, starting with the fact that the King Cobra is venomous whilst the Anaconda is not. King Cobra venom is actually much less potent than that of smaller deadly snakes within the world, most of whom live right here in my backyard in Australia. However, the King Cobra makes up for its lack of quality with overwhelming quantity, capable of injecting seven milliliters of venom into a body in a single bite, which is roughly enough to fill 1.5 teaspoons. Lots of poison. The venom then directly attacks the nervous system, removing communication between nerve cells, which can lead to paralysis and death within 30 minutes. For a human, anyway. For an elephant, it would take something like three hours. Still, a terrifyingly achievable feat, though. But let's not leave anacondas out of this equation for too much longer, because they present a very different path, and their primary advantage lies within pure strength. Being non-venomous snakes, anacondas are left to rely on the power of constriction to survive and can produce forces of anywhere around 90 PSI, being pound force per square inch, which can be roughly equated to the force of a school bus sitting on your chest. So strength versus handy utility. This is very much a case of pick your poison, quite literally in the case of the King Cobra. But to help us out a bit, let's take a look at how the Gorgon sisters have made use of their respective fruits. And as expected in the case of Sandersonia, the Anaconda user, she invokes the power of her fruit to assist in a great array of blunt force attacks. However, she also has a particularly special use of the fruit with a technique known as Hebigami Suki Yamata no Orochi, whereby Sandersonia forms snakes with her newly elongated hair, actually resembling the life return technique invoked by Kumidori to manipulate his hair. Although at this point, it is not confirmed whether or not this is the case, and there is a possibility that this is an extra benefit of the fruit itself. As for Marigold, being the more venomous of the two, her attacks are based on poison and precision, even going so far as to use her tail to stab opponents. Marigold also has a similar technique to Sandersonia, whereby she forms her hair into giant snakes. However, in a more, let's, let's say, unique choice, Marigold chooses to set herself entirely on fire first, forming an attack known as Hebigamisuki Salamander. And just in regards to the heat resistance thing, it's difficult to say whether or not this comes as a property of the devil fruit itself, but I'd be much more inclined to say that it isn't, and that it's more than likely made possible through Marigold's use of armament Haki to protect herself. Now, as for awakening, this is where things become much more terrifying, because these particular Zoan transformations are already just massive in scale, even if the average person were to consume it. But should they be awakened, well, then we're looking at some serious snake. And not only that, but I'd imagine that the users would have an incredibly difficult time controlling the fierce instincts that either the Anaconda or the King Cobra demand, making them a pretty huge threat to whatever unfortunate creatures just so happen to be around them in the event of an awakening. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a snake human. Whilst many other cobras choose to dine on lizards and the like, quite notably, king cobras are a bit more picky and their diet consists almost exclusively of other snakes. So if you find yourself in a situation that the Gorgon sisters have and you got the anaconda fruit, well, I'd keep a close eye on your friend who will consume the king cobra fruit. Rather ironically, anacondas are generally well known for being fantastic swimmers and in reality are able to spend up to 10 minutes underwater without surfacing for air. However, sadly, this is a strength that cannot be invoked by the user of this fruit due to the 
stand a weakness of all devil fruits. If presented with the choice between these fruits, something you also may want to know is that King Cobras are primarily active during the day, whilst Anacondas are mainly nocturnal, so depending on what type of person you are, one or the other would likely suit your lifestyle better. In conclusion, snakes. Look, to be perfectly honest, of all of the Zoans out there, I'm certainly less keen on both of these fruits. I can't deny that they bestow the users with some magnificent power, but I just don't see them being wildly useful in day-to-day -day life. And even if their use was strictly combat related, which is where I believe both of them excel, they just don't seem more appealing to me personally than most other Zoan fruits we've examined. But you know, if big old snakes is your thing, then 10 out of 10, highly recommended. And with that, we are going to commit the heavy, heavy no me, model anaconda and model king cobra to the devil fruit encyclopedia. Next week, we are leaving Amazon Lily behind in favor of the much less appealing location of Impel Down. However, we have a lot of amazing devil fruits to analyze there, beginning with the one wielded by the one-time warden himself, the Doku Doku no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on these two incarnations of the heavy heavy No Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the encyclopedia, we are going to be having a Devil's Three Way as we take in two rather lengthy and somewhat girthy fruits. You know, just maybe I should consider rewriting this introduction.